let's see here. Here is the problem from the 2014 test. It was number 92, meaning that it was on the calculator active section. Um, but here's an example of where your calculator really doesn't do you a whole lot of good. Um, so here's an example. They give you a table of values. You've got f and g, f prime, um, the derivative of f. G is the inverse of F. Me, personally, if I were taking this test, when they tell me that, I'm going to go up to my table and I'm going to mark out G and I'm going to write F inverse in its place just because, I don't know, it helps me remember that. So it asks, what is the value of G prime of 4? Well, that is the derivative of the inverse um, well, actually, that's not the right way to write it. Um, the inverse, you're taking the derivative of that, okay, at 4. But that, that's the reason why they use f and g, because that's really confusing-looking notation when you've got the inverse and, and the derivative. That's why they use the f and the g. So uh, all I have to remember is that's 1 over f prime of f inverse of 4, well, f inverse of 4 is negative 2, so that's 1 over f prime of negative 2, and f prime of negative 2 is 4. Okay, that's really all you have. You just have to be able to remember that it's 1 over f prime of f inverse of x. Okay, so that's with the table. Uh, in 2013, they didn't give you a table, they gave you a function, um, 23, that would still be on the calculator inactive portion, okay, so uh, they tell us that g is the derivative of f, and f is 2x plus e to the x. The point 0, 1 is on the graph of f. What is the value of g prime? So a g prime of 1. So that's 1 over f prime of f inverse of 1. This is inactive. Okay? But it's not that bad because why would they give us this value right here? Why would they give us the point zero, 01 is on the graph of f? Well, if that's on the graph of f, that means on the graph of f inverse... What point is there? 1, 0. X's and Y's switch places uh, on the inverse. So that means F inverse of 1 is 0. And then all we have to do is take the derivative of our function. So that would be 2 plus e to the x. Derivative of 2x is 2. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And we want to plug in 0. Um... What is e to the 0 power? 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. So it is b, 1 third. 2 plus 1 is 3, so 1 over 3, 1 third. Okay, so that was the question in uh, 2013. And then going back to the 2012 test, they give us a function, let g be the inverse. Given that f of 0 is 1, what is the value of g prime of 1? Okay, again, 1 over f prime of f inverse of 1. Well, they tell us f of 0 is 1, then f inverse of 1 is 0. They very rarely give you extraneous, with the, with the exception of the table problems, if they phrase it this way, they don't usually give you extraneous information. If they tell you something about a point, it's because you're going to have to use it. Um, and so let's see here. What's the derivative of f? 3 times 2x plus 1 squared times 2. Do a little chain rule there. Plug in 0. So that's 6 times 1 squared. 6. So that's 1 sixth. That's really how easy these problems are. Okay. To my knowledge, I have never seen an inverse problem on the free response section. Okay. 
It's only on the multiple choice section, and it's either one of these two ways. Either they give you a function, and they give you a point. They ask you to find the value of the derivative of the inverse at, uh, guess what, the same kind of point. Uh, or they give you the table. Okay, or they give you the table. So the big thing is you just got to remember what that formula is, so to speak. I'll take the notes, um, but I feel like people didn't quite get everything from it that they were supposed to get because we've still made a few mistakes um, uh, on the derivative of exponential functions. So let's just run through some examples really quickly just to make sure everybody's on the same page, um, and then we will uh, we'll do practice problems tomorrow. Okay, um, so just a reminder, the derivative of the, it can be called the natural exponential, it, it's e to the x, okay? Um, so the derivative is itself, but if there's something else in the exponent besides just x, we got to multiply by its derivative, okay? So if we're asked to find the derivative of e to the 2x minus 1, then it is simply e to the 2x minus 1 times 2. And I'm just going to go ahead and stick that in the front because that's where we typically put um, constants. Okay, uh, example B, e to the negative 3 over x. Okay, so the derivative of that is itself times the derivative of the exponent. Okay, well the derivative of this exponent is not quite so straightforward, right? because let me just go over here to the side and rewrite that as negative 3x to the negative first. So the derivative of that is positive 3 over x squared. Most likely you would see this rewritten um, like this as an answer choice if they had something strange. This is kind of an unusual problem, um, but it's a good opportunity to remind you of your power rule. Yes, ma'am. Right. Yes. Yes. Well, now hang on. If it's another variable, that, that's a different story. Okay. All right. For example, example two. <laughs> I bet we do use the product rule. Uh, find the relative extrema of the function x times e to the x. Okay, so good reminder, if we are asked to find relative extrema, what do we have to do? Set the derivative equal to zero. Okay, so uh, we got to start by taking the derivative. Yes, it is a product rule. We've got x times e to the x. So first times the derivative of the second plus derivative of the first times the second. Okay, so it almost seems a little too simple, but a lot of times e to the x is, is fairly simple. Okay, we've got to set that equal to zero and solve. Well, I do notice that I have some like terms here. So I'm going to go ahead and factor out that e to the x, and that leaves me with x plus 1. e to the x is equal to zero. This is something you've got to know. Does e to the x ever equal zero? No, e to the x itself does not equal zero. You should be familiar with what it looks like, um, but it's a function that looks something like that, but it never crosses the x-axis unless it's like e to the x minus one or, or something like that, okay? Um, then it's going to shift down and it'll cross the x-axis, but just e to the x never equals zero, so we don't have to worry about that. We just have to worry about x plus one equaling zero, which means that we have a relative extrema or a potential, this is just a critical point, it may not be an actual extrema, this is just a critical point at negative one. How do we test? What do we have to do? Do our number line, okay. We need to check something to the left and to the right. What do we plug it into? We plug it into the derivative. We want to know the sign of the derivative. We want to know if the sign of the derivative changes. Okay, so if we plug in negative 2, we've got uh, e to the negative 2 times uh, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So e to the negative 2, I don't care what that value is, is it positive or negative? 
positive. Look at this graph right here. E is always positive, um, but then we multiply it by negative 1. So we are negative to the left. When we plug in 0, we have e to the 0 times 0 plus 1. Um, so e to the 0, that's positive. So our derivative changes from negative to positive. So does that mean we have a minimum or a maximum of negative 1? Minimum, because we change from decreasing to increasing. So we have a minimum at <coughs> negative 1. I do want to know the, the y value. So what do I plug that into? The original. Negative 1 e to the negative 1. So that's negative 1 over e. We have a minimum at negative 1, negative 1 over e. Okay. Now, depending on it, you, you've seen these problems phrased all different ways. They may ask you, where are the relative extrema? Well, then it's just asking for the x values. If it says what, um, that's referring to y values. Sometimes it asks for the entire point. Really, you just got to look, look at the answer choices. Okay. But as far as free response questions go, if it says where, that's x, that's location. If it says what, that's y. That's the actual value. Okay, you've got to keep those two things straight. Okay, um, let's look at another example here. And I think, is this? Yeah, okay, we'll finish up. Um, show that the norm, yes? Or, like, for a response question, if it's like where and you give them the whole point, would that be a problem? I don't think they get bent out of shape out of that. Um, no. But if they ask what and you just give the x, then they're not going to yeah. give you credit. Yeah. Yes, what value? That's y. Okay, so uh, the normal probability density function. Now that sounds really fun, uh, fancy, but do y'all remember back to um, Math 3 when we did the probability and we talked about the normal curve, the bell curve? Ring of curve. Remember the curve. Yeah, the curve. Okay. Well, this is actually, um, th this is the function that gives that graph. If you graph this, you would see, you would see that bell curve that we talked about. Okay. Whether you remember or not, I promise you we did. And y'all hated it. So, uh, that's probably why you don't remember. Anyways, but it's just asking us to show that it has points of inflection when x is equal to positive or negative 1. What gives us points of inflection? Second derivative. Second derivative. Now, this is a very intimidating looking function, but is it really that yucky? It, I mean, it is yucky, but is it really that bad? No, it's not, because what is this right here? 1 over the square root of 2 pi, that's a constant. Okay, that's a constant. That's just a scalar multiple. So we don't have to do anything with that. Um, and I'm pretty sure that the pi is in the denominator. Um, so that's just a constant. So really all we have to focus on is over here. This is e to the negative x squared over 2. I know that's kind of weird notation the way that I had to type it in there. Um, but that's really what it is. Okay. Uh, so e to the negative x squared over 2 times what would be the derivative of negative x squared over 2? Negative x. Yeah. Negative 1 x. Bring down the exponent. Twos cancel. Subtract 1 from the exponent. So the derivative of the exponent is negative 1. Or excuse me, negative x. Okay? So that's the first derivative. But we want points of inflection. That means we need the second derivative. Okay. So now we do have to do the uh, product rule. Okay. I'm just going to keep that constant out front. I'm just going to put a big set of parentheses after it so that I don't have to deal with it that much. Okay, So um, the way that I have it ordered, this is my first times the derivative of the second plus um, second times the derivative of the first. Well, we just took the derivative of that. So just use your work. Okay. Completely redo the work. You already took the derivative of e to the negative x squared over 2. So just bring it down. Okay. Huh. Hmm? 